So today, very exciting day because we are going to go from this to this. For every thousand views we get on this video, we're going to be donating five dollars to Feeding America. And eBay Motors is going to match every dollar that we raise. So if we get a million views in the first week, that's ten thousand dollars to feed hungry people in America who are very much in need right now. So make sure to share this video so we can meet that goal. And just for full transparency, we will be live streaming next Saturday. So any views we get to that point. We'll be donating that much money on their website and showing it with you guys. So let's get to Lucas's garage and get wiring this bad boy. We have ourselves a Haltech Elite 550 ECU and wiring harness. And we're here at SMS Auto and Marine and they're gonna help us wire it up and figure out all this uh, wizardry. And then hopefully very soon, we'll be able to start this monster. So when you do something like this, what's the first step? Lay out all the spaghetti, <laughs> identify it, and then decide how you're gonna wire it. So if you look at the motor over there, you'll see we've got all the factory wiring coming off of the throttle body assembly is all labeled so that when it comes time to hook it up, it's we don't have to look at the diagram every single time because that is time consuming. It's easier to look at it first time, get it all pinned out or laid out. And then like here, these are all the wires. We know where they go. So these are all basically gonna be plug and play to the motor for the coil, uh, coil packs, the injectors, uh, TPS. And then these are We've got the ones control. that we're not quite sure yet. We gotta do a little bit of research and see. Um, there's a couple things that I know we're not gonna use like cam sensor. Um, and then there's digitally programmable inputs and outputs, which we're gonna be using some of them but that's gonna be part of the programming, so we'll yep. see what Haltech and Casey has to say about that. We have the throttle position sensor that talks to the engine or talks to the ECU, and then we have an idle control motor that is controlled by the ECU, and then on the other side, we have a second throttle position sensor, which is actually sensing the position of the choke. We will hopefully be able to recreate that. Worst case scenario, manual choke. Ethan can make a manual choke. Well, I don't even <laughs> need to make it. You just reach forward, choke, <laughs> Very basic. Hey guys, we're gonna take a quick second to talk about the sponsor of this video, eBay Motors, and specifically the new features coming to the eBay Motors app. There's already a community tab where you can post about your favorite cars, talk about other cars that you see listed on eBay, and it's a feature that is constantly being improved. But right now, we made a post about the Tacoma on there, and you could go check it out, leave a comment, and we'll be responding to comments all week on that community tab. So make sure you download the app, it's free, and go drop us a comment and we'll respond. But what we haven't talked about is two really cool new features. There is a chat, so you can just get in with an instant chat with the seller, say, hey, when was the clutch redone? Is the transmission smooth? You know, whatever you gotta talk about with that seller, it'll be just directly built into the listing. You can just chat them up right there, boom. And another thing is they're introducing escrow. Now this vehicle protection program is gonna cover you if your vehicle's not delivered, if something was undisclosed in the title, or certain vehicle defects that were undisclosed in the eBay description. So now you can buy with confidence, you can chat instantly, 
and you can just browse cool cars, hop in on the community tab and talk to people about cool rigs. So go download the eBay Motors app. It is for free. And like Ethan said in the beginning of this video, for every thousand views, we're giving $5 to Feeding America and eBay Motors is matching that. And we will be live streaming our donation Saturday. So make sure you just share this video because one share could be five, 10 bucks for a really great cause. We have a lot of need right now. And us and eBay Motors, we're just trying to do what we can. So we really appreciate it, guys. Now let's get back to building. What we did here, because this is Haltech's fuse box, all we have on it is a ECU relay and a fuel pump relay and then corresponding fuses. They've got space for other accessories. We're gonna add one more, which would be for the fan. Um, but because this is so big and we're limited space, we are gonna basically wire in the relays from the Adventure 990 that we got the whole harness. And so these relays should be sufficient. We'll wire them in in place. And as you can see, they'll be a whole lot smaller. ECU itself and we need to find a mounting location for it that's both relatively protected and uh, relatively easy access. So at the moment where I'm thinking of mounting it is inside the front bumper here which will be as protected as it can get and extremely close to the engine so the wiring harness will be really short and nice and tidy. Plus it has a uh, built-in map sensor, manifold absolute pressure, right? Yeah. yeah, manifold absolute pressure sensor built into the ECU itself, so we can run that, the line from that up to the throttle bodies here and get our get that nice and close to the ECU as well. Air temp sensor here, pulled out of the air box. We'll have to make a place for that to go in whatever new air box we either make or get, because um, obviously we're not using that ginormous air box that was on here. Uh, we'll figure that out later because that doesn't... We could run it with this just sitting here for starters, so... One of the many things that'll happen later on. So, well, Lucas is over there wiring up our ECU and over here graffitiing his race car with our stickers. I mean, he has a Mighty Car Mod sticker. He's got to have a Grind Hard sticker as well. I haven't seen anything that clean before. Yeah, that's a really shiny, clean engine. I don't think I've ever owned an engine that clean. Not even close. And then we have taillights and... Fuel pump and ECU is on one. Yep. Fuel and pump. Fan. Fuel pump, ECU, and fan? No, uh, I've got the fan and the fuel pump on one circuit and the ECU on another. Now's the time to merge all of these wires for the uh, throttle bodies, injectors, coils and stuff into the Haltech wiring harness. We also are figuring out where we're gonna mount everything. So we've got our relays and stuff. They're gonna mount inside the bumper here as well as ECU mounting there. We have our wideband controller for the O2 sensor that'll mount back underneath next to the battery with some of the other electronics. And then We've got our power wires and stuff going back to the battery. Power ground, fuel pump, and key power for the ignition switch that will run underneath and go back. And then these are the ones we're undecided on at the moment. Coming together. Some progress. got a pile of spaghetti, but more importantly, we got some stuff figured out here. We do, yeah, most of it actually. Almost everything's wired in. 
You got everything on the top except for the idle air control and the choke, which we're gonna wait for Haltech on. Got everything routed in a spot that we thought was out of the way. Obviously there's gonna be some changes as Ethan finishes more of the fabrication. This spot that Ethan found to mount the Haltech I think is awesome because you can see the logo. Yep. And then it's super protected. We've got our neat little bundle of question mark wires for now. And, and this bundle is all power supply basically. And switches. Back here we have a bunch of stuff that's not finalized yet. We'll try to get that done and I'll get most of this mounted. And then we'll come back here when we have some more stuff figured out and hopefully do some test starts. Yeah, I really like how this all came out. Good job, Lucas. It's nice and tidy. Can't wait to ride it. You know, oh, yeah. Wait, you think gonna he's going to let fun. you drive? Oh, I'm driving. <laughs> <laughs> We are back at the, uh, you know, crusty grind hard garage instead of Lucas's beautiful shiny shop. Uh, and this week we're going to be working on tying in all the little things that we need to be able to make this thing start. We have this thermostat housing that came with the bike, uh, thermostat in there, and it originally sat like kind of up there and hooked up to this pipe and then this end went to the radiator. It's going to be the same basic thing except now it goes to this frame tube right here to carry the water back to the radiator at the back. And so it actually fits quite nicely right there. And then I can run a hose from that down to there. And right now what I'm working on, this uh, this tube used to go up like that. It, it slides right into here into the water pump housing. So I'm just chopping that down to fit in the space that we have. A little piece of hose to connect it and uh, That'll be all the coolant lines hooked up in the front. Today is one of those fixed drones and edit inside stormy days, but it's rare we work inside together. Pretty much the first time this has ever happened. Yeah. <laughs> so I've got the Haltech ECU and the whole wiring harness out of the hurricane and in here. Um, and I'm figuring out the software end of it and just figuring out some of the questions we had about um, different sensors and controllers and stuff like that. Uh, I just want to understand as much of it as I can before I call up anybody at Haltech and ask questions because if I call up and ask them a question they're like, do you know this? I'll be like, uh, no. I have a white light. That's good. Normal operations. Exactly what you wanted. Exactly. So now it should show up in the software? Um, uh, maybe. I probably, oh, handshake, ACU connected. Hey, look at that. Now I can start telling the computer what kind of engine we're dealing with. So we can go 999 on the CCs, piston four stroke, number of cylinders, two, so now that I've gotten into the software and have a very, very basic understanding of how that tuning and stuff works, uh, I'm gonna plug this all back into the um, into the engine, set it all up, and then calibrate some of the sensors. Um, I'll just do what I can, and in the process, learn more about the software and uh, figure out what questions I need to ask. <laughs> but um, first step is plugging it all back in so that I can calibrate, for example, the throttle position sensor so that it knows what's going on there. What's cool is we calibrated the throttle position. So, or the throttle position sensor. So here it says throttle position table because that's the type of throttle we have. And you can see it's at 0%. Now, if you watch when I move the throttle plate on the engine, it knows where the throttle is. It works. So that's a uh, step in the right direction. On the other hand, this is an electronic choke, which after looking into the software and talking to Casey who tunes motorcycles for a living, um, that's thoroughly unnecessary for a fuel injected bike to have a mechanical choke because you can just tell the computer to uh, enrich in the fuel when air and coolant temps are below a certain number. So you can just tell the computer to run the choke Aside from it's not an actual choke, it's just changing the air fuel ratios. So um, since we couldn't, we don't have enough outputs from the ECU to run this anyway. So um, we'll just go ahead and delete 
this whole stepper motor thing that controls the choke plates. While we're waiting on figuring out what we're gonna do with the ECU, I'm going to uh, work on the radiator and adapting the coolant lines to it. Both of these inlet and outlets are much smaller diameter than the tubing that the coolant's running through and the other end. And I need to cut this one off and change the angle of it to make it work well with the uh, rubber tubing. So I'm gonna replace them both with a larger diameter piece of tubing. That one will angle down. So after talking with Haltech, um, our computer, the Elite 550, doesn't have support for a stepper motor idle control, but they said that stepper motors are kind of outdated, cheap tech, and so they're sending us a very basic, uh, but much better, single wire idle control motor that will work with the ECU, but until then we'll still be able to um, hopefully do our test start and, and do all that and figure out a lot of other things in the meantime because it, there are ways to make it idle without the idle control motor. It's just much better to have the motor. So uh, I went ahead and deleted all this stuff. This is the idle control motor, which we'll be replacing with something different, of course, but these are the choke plates and choke assembly, which again, after talking with everybody and thinking about it, these are super, super unnecessary <laughs> for a fuel injected engine with a tunable ECU. So if you look down inside there now, there's no obstructions until the throttle plates. So that means more airflow and just less clutter and hopefully more power. And Sweet. weight reduction. My favorite two words. <laughs> <laughs> and look how clean it looks now too. Yeah, cleaned it up a little bit. The intakes were super, super dirty. Another little thing we need to delete before we get it running is these things. These were like an emissions exhaust valve thing uh, and you can see one of them is right here obviously we're not gonna use those so I need to just make some block off plates for that out of a little piece of aluminum mm -hmm. 